and welcome to this learning video as you all know that we have started with the topic numerical integration and under this topic we have three different techniques to learn out of these three techniques we two techniques we have already learned that is trapezoidal rule and simpson's one third rule so here in this learning video the last but not the least the third technique that we are going to learn here is Simpson's 3 by 8th rule. So, without wasting time, let us start with this. So, in Simpson's 3 by 8th rule, first of all we will derive the formula and just like the Simpson's 1 third rule, we are going to make use of Newton's fourth quadrature formula to derive the Simpson's 3 by 8th rule formula with the help of this. Okay, so here also you would be having some data, say, say you are having some data, say x0, x1, x2, x3 and so on, xn. And corresponding data are y0, y1, y2, y3 and so on yn. So suppose you are given some data and you have to find out the integration of the integrand f of x from the limit x0 to xn that we can write as x0 plus nh. So what you need to do is you need to divide this interval like integration from x0 to x0 plus 3h plus integration from x0 plus 3h to x0 plus 6h plus integration from x0 plus 6h to x0 plus 9h and so on. And then we will sum up all these values. Let us understand this with the help of this diagram. Whereas this integration is nothing but the area under the curve and the process of finding out the area under the curve is, not, is known as quadrature. That's why we are making use of that quadrature formula given by Newton code. So this is the function y is equal to fx, here you have the value x0, then you have x1, then you have x2, then you have x3, then x4, then x5, then x6 and then you have say here x Okay, and the corresponding values is y. So this is y0, y1, y2, y3, y4, y5, y6. Okay, if you remember in the Simpsons one third rule, we have taken n is equal to 2. What is this n? This n is nothing but the number of intervals. Here in this Simpsons 3a rule, we will just take the number of intervals to be 3. Okay. So when you take the number of intervals to be 3, then what I need to consider? This is one interval, this is second and this is third. So I need to consider from x0 to x3. This is what I will consider. So I need to find out. This much of area first and then x3 to x6 then x6 to x9 and so on okay so for n is equal to 3 if you have this to be found out we will go for the Newton's fourth quadrature formula and for n is equal to 3 I would use this formula and substitute n is equal to 3 okay at the end of this learning video, I would make a one important remark that would really help you in guessing or in guessing like which problems to solve by which method, whether to apply Simpson's one third or whether to apply Simpson's 
three eight root. Okay, so let us first of all derive this. So I will first of all find out this value, that is integration from x zero to x zero plus three h f of x dx. This can be found out by making use of this formula by putting n is equal to three. So this would be three h. Here it is y zero plus this is three by two delta y zero plus this n is three. This three two is a six minus three is three by twelve del. This is del two. Del two of y zero, and then we have three into three minus two whole square by twenty four. Del three of y zero. No need to write down further terms. Okay. So this is nothing but three by sorry three h, and you can write this as y zero. Plus three by two. What is this? Delta y zero is y one minus y zero. Plus this is three by four. This is y zero minus two y one plus y two. Plus this is three one za. This is three eight za. And this is three minus two one. One whole square is one. So this is one by eight. Del three would be y three minus three y two plus three y one plus y zero. Okay, so we end up here. Now you can take eight common here. You would get three h by eight, and you remain with what is this? This is eight times y zero plus this is. I am taking eight outside, so this is twenty-four, twelve. Multiply and divide by eight, so eight common. This is one sir, four sir. So this is twelve y one minus twelve y zero plus this is eight by eight, so this is six y zero minus twelve y one plus. Six y two, and at last this that is y three minus three y two plus three y one plus y zero. Okay, here I have applied this uh, power difference of delta y zero is y one minus y zero. Delta two of y zero is behaves like a minus b whole square. So y zero minus two y one plus y two, and this delta three of y zero we have already seen. That it is nothing like this, okay? It's nothing but this. Now you collect all the terms. You would be getting three h by a. What are the y zero term? Minus twelve. Then plus six plus eight fourteen, and here it is y zero. Okay. So try to get this and resume the video. So I hope you might have found out this. So this is y zero eight minus twelve is minus four plus six. That eight minus twelve is minus four plus six plus two minus one. That's one. So we got y zero. Now collect the term of y one. This is twelve y one minus twelve y one get cancelled. We have three y one only. Okay, now collect the term of y two. So here we don't have y two. Here we have so six y two minus three y two. So that is three y two. And at last, collect the term of y three. That is one term y three. So we got this integration from x zero to x zero plus three h. Okay, f of x dx. Now. Next, we have to find out the integration from x zero plus three h to x zero plus six h f of x dx. And to find out this, we will 
we will take the next interval that is from x3 to x6. So x3 to x4 one interval, x4 to x5 second and x5 to x6 second. Okay. And as far as this expression is concerned, you just have to write down the same thing. Same thing, increment the value of the suffixes by 3. So you would get 3h by 8, then here y3 plus 3y4 plus 3y6 plus y5 and this is y6. Similarly, you can find out the next one that is integration from x0 plus 6h to x0 plus 9h f of x dx. Who can find this one? Very easy. Just increment the value of suffix by 3. So this would be y6 plus 3y7 plus 3y8 plus y9 and so on. Now what you can do is you can substitute these values over here and when you substitute those value in this say equation A you will get the required census 3.8 rule formula for census 3.8 rule so let me write in this integration from x0 to x0 plus mh f of x dx is equal to for this we have we have to add all this so we have 3 h by 8 common so in the bracket we remain with now we have only 1 y 0 and we would be having only 1 y n so let me write down y 0 plus y n now see the term of y 1 3 times then y 3 y 1 this would be y1 then 3 times y4, 3 times y5, 3 times y2, 3 times 7, 3 times 8. So I just need to write 3 times y1 plus y2 plus y4 plus y5 and so on. And you see the 2 times 1. Here it is y3, here it is y3, 2 times y3, here it is y6, here it is y6, 2 times, here it is y9, in the next one you will get 9, y9. So this is 2 times y3 plus y6 plus y9 plus and so on. This is nothing but the census 3-8 rule, okay, and how you can remember this, 3h by 8 y0 plus yn 3 times the term where the suffixes are not multiple of 3. Here you can see these are the suffixes 1, 2, 4 and 5 and these are not multiple of 3. Whereas if you see whenever the suffixes are multiple of 3 you have to multiply those terms by 2. Okay. So this is this is known as Simpsons Simpsons 38 rule Simpsons 38 rule okay now as I say in the end I will make one remark now suppose one question is asked like solve so and so integral with the help of Simpsons rule now you are not given whether to uh, solve by one third or by three eight rule. So in such cases, don't get confused. If the number of interval is even, feel free to apply Simpson's one third rule for the number of interval which is a multiple of three. Okay, you apply Simpson's three eight rule. Simple. Now you may be having like, sir, uh, we have 6. 6 is even as well as 6 is multiple of 3. Then which one to apply? So you can apply 1 third as well as 3 8 rule. Okay. But if you 
have number of interval even, you always go for one third rule because this will gives you more approximate answer in comparison to 3A rule. Okay, so this is what we have in this learning video. If you have any doubt or any queries to us, feel free to ask. You can write in the comment section as well. So thank you for watching this learning video and enjoy learning mathematics.